Welcome to So I Married a Record Collector. I'm Heidi Lee and just welcoming you all here to another episode where we troll through my husband's record collection and get his input on why he got it and some information about where it's from and, and all that fun stuff. Trivia, basically. So um, before we start, I just want to give a huge thanks to everyone who's been watching and subscribing at the time of recording this video, we are at a little over 200 subscribers. So that's really amazing. And I thank you so much for that. Again, when we went into this, there was really little to no expectation. So this is just really cool to see that many people that actually are interested in, in, in what we have to say about these records. So <laughs> really, really grateful for all that. So I appreciate you guys and just the kindness, again, that we've seen in the comments and the people that have uh, commented and reached out. So thank you again, and let's get started. We're still in the Bs, and I think we're actually going to be moving into the Cs on this one probably pretty soon. So stick around and we'll get started. All right, the first record in this set is by a movie star, TV star. This is Ed... Kooky Burns of 77 Sunset Strip. Uh, this is, I guess it's just called Kooky, according to the spine here. I know John has enjoyed watching 77 Sunset Strip, so there's no reason why he wouldn't have this record. By Ed Burns, the actor. Uh, see, he, of course, very, you know, beatnik, cool kind of guy. So there's songs on here like Hot Rod Rock, Kooky's Mad Pad, I Don't Dig You, Kooky, The Kooky Cha-Cha, and of course, the, I guess you would call it a hit or the single from this album, Kooky Kooky, Lend Me Your Comb. So, yes, super cool guy, Mr. Ed Burns. This record is on Warner Brothers. Guessing it's an original. A little scuffed up, but I'm guessing just super, super fun. So that's why John has it in his collection. Here we have Ed Burns, Kooky of 77 Sunset Strip with his one and only album on Warner Brothers, Kooky, with the novelty hit Kooky, Kooky, Lemme Your Comb. I really love this late 50s beatnik stuff even though this is like commercialized beatnik but uh 77 sunset strip was a cool show for a while we were subscribing to the warner archive roku channel I was watching a couple of episodes um i forget where i found this obviously in some antique mall three dollars why not warner brothers records in the late 50s is real interesting a lot of odd releases because that's when the label started and they were kind of like scrambling to release stuff when uh it's going to be a long while but when we get into our comedy records i got like one or two on warner brothers that are very strange um it's doesn't have the original inner but it's on that old time gray warner brothers and it's got all you know all kinds of crazy beatnik tracks like like i love you and of course uh my favorite hot rod rock but from 1959 ed burns as kooky star 77 sunset strip warner brothers records we moved into the seas quicker than I thought we were with Al Kalo Kalola Kaloya Kayola Al Kayoya Kayola I'm sorry I've never heard of him before but it is a uh, looks like a tough guitar English style so I'm guessing this is instrumentals there's Al there on the back. So he plays, oh, there you go, Heart Full of Soul, so Yardbirds, I Can't Get No Satisfaction, The Beatles, Help, Yesterday, Catch Us If You Can, the Dave Clark Five song. Oh, and of course he does an instrumental of You Really Got Me. So this is definitely a John record for sure. Like how they have the British Bulldog and his little 
little outfit there with the uh, Union Jack. Very cute. This looks like a, it's an original on United Artists. Don't know the year, but here's the United Artists record sleeve. Take a look at the vinyl, very, very clean. United Artists label there. Again, just some more fun instrumentals. Here we have, I'm going to mispronounce this man's last name, maybe I've never heard it mentioned, Al Keola. And he I know he recently passed away. Tough guitar, English style, instrumental versions of uh, British Invasion hits at a time. And I got this because he does You Really Got Me, like I've mentioned in previous videos, one of the few... Um, instrumental cover versions of a King song at the time the songs were the hits but it has a lot of the uh, hits at a time you know also does Yardbird's Heart Full of Soul but he also does uh you know Freddie and the Dreamers you know some Beatles tracks Dave Clark Five Satisfaction um just a little bit better at the Hermits Hermits did but they also she also he also does You Are On My Mind which which the this the We Five song I believe even though this is English style this is an example of, a, of why you gotta like uh, study the old time inner sleeves because I saw this pictured on a United Artists inner sleeve and I saw a track list and I'm like, man, I gotta find that. I can't remember where I got this. No price sticker or anything, no receipt. So I think I got this out of scanning the ads in Goldmine. Remember when Goldmine was really big and the inside was full of those really big ads with tiny print and you'd have to sit there with like a magnifying glass and look through and then you sent in your bid via mail then waited to get an answer or you just, you know, if it's payment, you just paid um I believe this is from 65 united artist mono copy he was a session guitarist who's on a million things much like people like billy strange and um um oh i can't remember the guy right now but anyway another another session guitarist who i'm probably gonna remember as soon as we sign off he plays on lightning strikes anyway al keola tough guitar english style united artist records in 1965 up next is a band that i have heard of but I probably only know their hit song. Uh, this is Canned Heat. Looks like they're all sitting down to enjoy a, maybe a meal together. Yeah. The Canned Heat band. There's the track listing. Don't think I know any of these songs. Rolling and Tumbling, Bullfog, Blues. Sounds like a lot of blues. Not sure if this is an original or not. I don't like I don't like the plastic sleeves. It's really hard to get back in. But this is on Liberty Records. Here we have Canned Heat's debut from 1967. A stereo copy. Mono copies are very rare. Um, found this up here somewhere. I can't remember where. It may have been Goodwill or something, but there's no price sticker, so it might have been at a garage sale or something. This is really, really clean. I don't think it was ever played much. Liberty Records. Um, I don't know if this came out right before they played at Monterey, which this weekend is the anniversary of Monterey Pop Festival for those that were playing the home game. Um, or they got signed to Liberty because of their appearance at Monterey. I'm not a big Can't Heat fan. I have one best of CD, which has done me well all these years. And then I got this because I don't think anything from this is on the CD, but I might... But um, I think this is kind of a different lineup compared to the lineup that had hits. Because I see the drummer on this is Frank Cook and not the other guy. Frank Cook later went on to a San Francisco band called Pacific Gas and Electric who had a hit with Are You Ready? But um, if you like the blues, this is your your band, your album. Um, and also around the same time or right before this, they actually recorded some songs for a short drag racing documentary that you can find on YouTube. But i um, blanking on the name. It's called seven seconds of love or something like that it's got seven seconds in it anyway canned heat your self-titled debut on liberty records 1967 stereo copy up next we've got captain beefheart and his magic band with the album lick my decals off baby now if that's not romance i don't know what is but uh, i know captain beefheart's a big John really enjoys Captain Beefheart, so I'm not surprised that he has this record. Again, not very familiar with him or them. Um, this is on Straight 
Straight Records. 1970. Words and music copyrighted for the world of beef heart music of BMI. I like that sticker on there. That's kind of a cool font. Yes, I'm that nerdy that I, I like fonts, but. <laughs> now I know there probably is some controversy in the organization of records for sure if Captain Beefheart should be listed under C or B. In my mind, I think it would be B because you know, beef heart is a captain, but I guess maybe it's more proper to have it under C because that's where John has this. So agree or disagree, this album looks pretty clean. So I'm wondering if this is a reissue or just a very, really nice original. Captain Beefheart and the Magic Band with Lick My Decals Off Baby. That's the way Captain Beefheart pronounces it. Decals, not decals. Uh, came out in 1970, right after Trout Mask Replica. Um, maybe a little more accessible than that album. This is not an original. This is a exact reissue, I believe, through Rhino Records. Even though it has a recreation of the straight label. I got this at Princeton Record Exchange. Brand new. Um, can't, I know the most well-known song on here that I can remember is I Love You, You Big Dummy, which the Buzzcocks covered on a demo. Um, this a record's also known for a very strange and I think award-winning television commercial that Warner Brothers Records did for this album, which is, um, features the captain and the band members and he kicks over a can of paint and it makes a perfectly straight white line. Just a really bizarre kind of museum of modern art type commercial. Captain Beefheart, not real. I've always noticed you be very, very, very few female Captain Beefheart fans. It's mainly a guy thing. And of course, Heidi Lee and I, when we hear of Cap, we listen to Captain Beefheart or hear him, we think of that classic to us scene in High Fidelity where that guy wants to buy a copy as safe as milk and they won't sell it to him. And I'm such a nerd, I can see the record. I'm like, that's not a first pressing, that's a second. I just love how the guy looks at it so close and he's like, Speaking of which, makes me remember of uh, guys who used to come in our store and look so closely to record. And I swear one time a guy was smelling the records, and Corey swears he saw a guy lick a record. I don't know. Anyway, Captain Beefheart and the Magic Band with a photograph taken, I think, at Universal Studios. Uh, lick my decals off, baby. 1970, exact ratio on straight via Warner Brothers and Rhino. Another captain this time, but this time we've got Captain Lockheed and the Starfighters by Robert Calvert. War movie soundtrack with Arthur Brown, Viv Stanchel, and Hawkwind. So that definitely sums up why it's in John's collection. Don't know anything about this record, but we did solve the mystery as to why he has it. Um, this comes with a very extensive lyric sheet. I suppose if it's a play or movie, then maybe you'd want to sing along. This is on Import Records, distributed by Gem Records, South Plainfield, New Jersey. There's the sticker there. Let me hold it right side up so you can actually see it. Here we have Captain Lockheed and the Starfighters. Uh, actually, follow, I might be filing this in the wrong place because I've since kind of figured out it's a solo album by Robert Calvert, who was a Hawkwind lead singer and lyricist for a while. Um, early Izzy's purchase. There may be a receipt in here. If Heidi Lee hasn't found it. Oh, but there is a lyric insert pamphlet. Um, this is like one or two concept albums, I think, done by Robert Calvert. He also had one called Lucky Leaf and the Longships, which was like about Swedish guys, explorers and stuff. This um, most well-known song, I believe, is... Um, whoa, what's it called? I know it's a really good tune, too. Ejection, which sounds like a Lost Hawkwind single. Um, but this is on Gem Records, which was out of South Plainfield, New Jersey, who my friend Tommy who owned off the record in Cranford, worked for for years before he struck out on his own. Um, features not only Robert Calvert or Hawkwind, but Arthur Brown, Vivian Stanchel, and most of Hawkwind. Pretty fun record. Vivian Stanchel does like, um, not vocals, well, maybe some vocals, but he does a lot of spoken word stuff where he's playing some crazy um, German uh, <laughs> uh, 
uh, air, uh, Luftwaffe officers. That's basically what it's about. It's about this rock opera about the Luftwaffe. Uh, kind of a strange record. 1974 via United Artist. And this was a uh, manufacturer distributed by Gem Records in South Plainfield, New Jersey. Captain Lockheed and the Starfighters by Robert Calvert. Up next, we've got Joe King Carrasco and Joe Coronas doing Bandito Rock. There they are on the back with the track listing. This is from 1987 on Rounder Records Corporation. Like how they have the size first tortilla, second tortilla. Not sure how uh, PC that is, but I guess they're just having some fun. Here is the record. Here we have another very early Izzy's purchase. And I don't think I've listened to this since I bought it. I think I bought it for a laugh. Joe King Carrasco. And, and Los Coronos with Bandito Rock. They're kind of a Sam, Sir Douglas Quintet kind of Tex-Mex thing. What label is this on? Oh, it's on a Rounder, on Rounder Records out of Massachusetts. But it's got all kinds of fun songs. Hey Gringo, Bandito Rock, Pachuco Hop, Chicano Town. I, I just like a lot of Latin stuff. And I think, I, yeah, I guess it was like an early Izzy's purchase. Yep, there's the receipt with Dave's handwriting. Yeah, because that day I also bought a bunch of Bill Dana, Jose Jimenez comedy records. Uh, April 7th, when we were he was still at the 904 location before I worked there. Um, yeah, I haven't played this, I think, since I bought it, but it's still in the collection. Joe King Carrasco and, e and Los, Las Coronas, Bandito Rock on Rounder. Now we have a band called Cartoon. I think a self-titled album, Cartoon, on Atlantic Records. The gatefold track listing. There are the guys from Cartoon. Don't recognize them. Don't recognize any songs, so I'm sure John will hip us to what's going on with this one. Again, we've got that cool Atlantic Records catalog sleeve with the albums. And here we have, this is an interesting one, Cartoon, self-titled on Atlantic Records in 1969. They were a Scottish band from Glasgow, and they were kind of discovered or brought to the attention of Lulu and her manager. And she heard their tapes, and uh, through her manager, got them signed to Atlantic Records. And if you believe Wikipedia, and not the Led Zeppelin biographies, not Zeppelin, but Cartoon were the first... English hard rock band or rock band signed to Atlantic and this came out in 1969 and actually features as a guest musician if you could if I could see where it is down here guest artist Jimmy Page on guitar he's on a few tracks if not all of them um, I also read on Wikipedia and elsewhere that they toured the states in 1969 with Led Zeppelin although I haven't seen any posters or anything listing your name as being an opener for Led Zeppelin. Not a bad record, not a bit hard rock, a crit, bit just uh, regular rock and roll pop. Um, then they made a second album, but then Atlantic dropped them because this didn't sell so well. Um, I like it. I remember playing a song from this on our, our radio show on our station. And then like almost a year later, one of my listeners contacted me or I bumped into him because he had been recording the show and he was trying to remember what song off this I play, which made me feel good. I was like, wow, someone's listening that closely and making notes. He always he always does that. But um, where did I get that? I got this at a record show, and I was really happy to find it because I thought it was something. I mean, it is not easy to find, but I don't think it's very rare. But anyway, 1969 Atlantic Records, cartoon, Scottish band with Led Zeppelin connections. Now, you may ask yourself, why in the world... Does JT have a Sean Cassidy album in his collection? Yeah, this is, I remember when he got this, so this is Sean Cassidy. It's got the original plastic on it, so it's kind of hard to see, but it's called Wasp. It's kind of creepy right there. 
Um, but he does songs like Rebel Rebel, which I'm assuming is the David Bowie song. He does Once Bitten, Twice Shy. He does So Sad About Us by The Who. So I think that's probably one of the main reasons why John has this in his collection. But it could be really good too. So I'm not going to judge for sure until I hear his side of the story. But here's the inner sleeve. And I guess, you know, he's bitten by a wasp. This is on Warner Brothers. Guessing this, oh, 1980. So not quite, not quite just out of the 70s yet. Um, yeah, I don't really know much about Sean Cassidy except for the, you know, bubblegummy pop type things. So this could actually be really good. It could be very new wavy, I'm guessing, trying to move into that realm. But yeah, a Sean Cassidy album. This is Wasp. Here we have one. Found this at a now closed antique store in Cadillac, Michigan, not long after I moved here. Sean Cassidy and Wasp on Warner Brothers Records from, gee, what year is this from? But this is an interesting record. Oh, it's 1980. Like I was going to say, well, good thing I checked anyways. I would have been wrong. This is his new wave record. I mean, you can laugh about David Cassidy, Sean Cassidy, oh, teen idol pop. But those guys, as young teenagers, were in the late 60s, were into, like, heavy rock. You know, David Cassidy has always said, yeah, I love, you know, John Mayall, Cream, but then I had to record Cherish. Um, this was produced by Todd Rundgren, and it's really not that bad of a record. Um, a lot of interesting cover versions. The most popular, well-known one probably is his version of David Bowie's Rebel Rebel. And then, uh, I guess Heidi would know, this is uh, a David Byrne composition called The Book I Read or Read. Maybe a Talking head song. And also some Todd Rundgren uh, covers. A song called Pretending. And Wasp itself is a Todd Rundgren tune. But why did I also get this? Because he does a cover to Who's So Sad About Us. Which is actually pretty good. And he also does Mont the Hoople's or Ian Hunter's Once Bitten, Twice Shy. And the Animal's It's My Life. So uh, an interesting little record for the collection by an artist you didn't think would do something this interesting. Sean Cassidy, Wasp. Produced by Todd Rundgren, Warner Brothers Records, 1980. Hey, this is something called CCS. Whole lot of love. And back kind of looks like the front. There's a little bit of a track listing there. It is a promo. Um, they do I Can't Get No Satisfaction. Whole lot of love. I'm guessing maybe it's the Led Zeppelin song. Well, the, the song that Led Zeppelin made famous. And Living in the Past. I'm guessing that might be the Jethro's Hole song. But here is the gatefold. Great fuchsia sleeve here. This is on Rack. R-A-K. Here we have CCS and Whole Lot of Love. This was a project band of uh, British bluesman Alexis Corner. CCS, I believe, stood for Collective Consciousness Society. Now, this is probably their most well-known one because in England, their cover version of this Led Zeppelin's Whole Lot of Love was a top 10 hit and became the theme to Top of the Pops for many, many years. And then... Um, one day, uh, one of our wedding presents, uh, my friend Fusco got us a big uh, DVD box set of various British spy shows. And it has Robert Vaughn's post Man From U.N.C.L.E. show to Protectors in there. And there's a scene where they're in a discotheque. And this version of A Whole Lot of Love starts playing. Uh, got this at a Tommy store. As I say, one of those days where I went to hang out and I would feel guilty for not buying something. So this is probably like a buck. It's on Rack Records, which was uh, Mickey Most um, label. But... Um, no indication that it was distributed by Columbia, but it has this promo strip along the bottom, which I always associate with Columbia Records promos. And um, besides, and we'll show you the rack label, which you probably know from Suzy Quattro releases. Um, besides um, living in, besides Whole Lot of Love, they also do Jethro Tull's Living in the Past, uh, Wade in the Water, and of course I can't get no satisfaction. Everybody covered that, and John Lee Hooker's Boom Boom. Don't know where this inner sleeve comes from. I think it's incorrect. The year release, I believe, is 
1978, distributed by CBS, which is Columbia. Yeah, you're there, 1970. I want to get there. They have one more album, I think, but there's also an inexpensive best of collection or a collection of both their records out there because they also covered Led Zeppelin's Black Dog as a single, which I'd be interested to hear. So anyway, CCS, Whole Lot of Love on Rack Records, distributed by CBS in America, 1970, Lexus Corner Project. Now we've got the Chambers Brothers with the New Generation, which I remember John getting the CD maybe and playing this song quite a bit for a while. And it is a really good song, the New Generation. Chambers Brothers, known for their time song and a lot more. So this is a Columbia release. The red Columbia label there. Here we have the Chambers Brothers under album New Generation. This was sealed. I think I got this at Izzy's when I was an employee. Um, cut corner, so it was some kind of return in 1970. This came after their classic Time Has Come Today hit single and album. Um, this one is kind of desirable because it has um, a track called Funky, which is a short, cool song. I, and I remember I was at Izzy's working um, it was like 45 minutes ago for a closing on a Monday, and I had a lone customer, a Japanese kid, didn't speak much English. And I was playing the Chambers Brothers' greatest hits, and Funky came on, and he rushed to the counter. He said, oh, what that is? Oh, Chambers Brothers. So I sold it to him. But I also remember he brought an uh, imported M&M 12-inch to the counter, which was, because it was an import, it was a little more than usual. And he tried to tell me how much he was going to pay for $10.99. I said, nope, it's $12.99. He still bought it anyway. Um, the title track on this... Uh, was edited down for a single because the album version here is about something like 10 minutes long or so another long psychedelic jam yeah it's 11 minutes 54 seconds um but a great song nonetheless the single version is probably preferable if you have a short attention span but um it's kind of like they were going for another time has come today feel um but it's got a really great riff um, this came out in, I believe, 1970 or maybe late 69, but a great record, great psychedelic strange cover there. The Chambers Brothers, New Generation on Columbia. There you have it. Another set of 10 records from John's record collection. Hope you enjoyed that little set of 10 and thank you for sticking around. Um, if you have any comments, please be sure to leave them below. Uh, subscribe if you feel so inclined to do so. And I hope you have a great week. Again, thank you to all of our subscribers and everyone who's commented before and since. We really appreciate you guys. And we'll see you next time.